you know, let me say something at this point. <clears throat> and again, hear this whole thing. And maybe you've never heard a pastor say this to you. There are times when I, Francis Chan, doubt my salvation. And there have been times in my life when I've even doubted the, ex the existence of God. Now I can look back at those times and I may have them in the future. But every time I have those doubts about my salvation and even the existence of God at times, it is always when I have not been strong in my prayer life. Because when I'm praying and I'm reading the Word of God and I'm pursuing what He wants, the way He answers my prayers, it is so blatantly obvious. And this is not just this, you know, crutch that I'm trying to make up. No, this is reality. I mean, during those times when I am tight with God and I'm walking with Him and I am praying like crazy, and I'm seeing, you can't tell me that God doesn't exist. I would look at you like you're crazy, like your mom doesn't exist. You know, I mean, what are you, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Gosh, you know, it's like, no, you made it up. You made her up. It's just, it's, this is, this is it. Like there's, there's no way. I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, man, I am his, he is mine. The spirit's crying out, Abba, Father. Man, we are, we are just so tight and there is no doubt. And the answered prayer, everything else where I just go, oh man, I know, I know. Thank you, John. I know that I'm saved. I know I have eternal life. But then I'll stray a little bit and I won't be so close to God and I won't be praying and I'm not pursuing diligently and, and, and working hard towards or making sure my election is I really am saved or, and those doubts start creeping in so you guys know what I'm talking about see you see you understand it's this this thing where he says so man don't do that he goes diligently pursue these things and you won't fall go after it and then he finally he says in uh, in verse 11 we'll close with this he says for in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ for in this way i love this for in this way there'll be richly provided for you <coughs> an entrance into the kingdom it's talking about when you die and coming to the presence of God and entering what we call the kingdom of heaven, however that looks, this eternal kingdom, that there would be an abundant or a rich entrance. Okay, I've never really thought about this a whole lot, but man, was I thinking about this week. Have you ever, have you ever thought about the reception you're gonna get when you get to heaven? Because the Bible teaches, we don't just all go in the same way. I mean, we're all saved by his grace, absolutely. But, you know, like 1 Corinthians talks about, depending on what you did on this earth and how you lived your life, some of the, everything you did could be burned up. It's going to be shown to be wood, hay, and stubble. And it talks about how you yourself would be saved, but it says, but as though through the fire. It's almost like you went through the fire and you come out and you got nothing left. You know, you're sitting there, you're everything's just you just smell like smoke and you got nothing to show for your life and it's like oh hi guys you know versus the person who really did things for the for the sake of the lord for his glory for his majesty you suffered and everything else and you put up with it and you stayed firm until the end and you were just going after it he says you you pursue these qualities and you won't live an unfruitful life where everything's burned up in fact you're going to pull it off you're not going to fall you'll get to the end and you'll have a rich entrance into the kingdom and and i'm willing to bet i would i would bet my house on this that uh many of you have never even thought about this because you're so insecure about your own salvation that you would be happy just to get in at this point.